Hi, everyone, and welcome to RESA Live. My name is Carla Velasco. Today, we're going to do a brief overview of the ADAPT PT software and how you can use this tool to quickly design beams and slabs. ADAPT PT is a 2D equivalent frame program, which means that we, were, we are going to be modeling strips of a slab in the software along a support line, as you see here in this diagram, or we can also do a full beam run. I, if you have complex geometry or loading, if you want to analyze um, and look at the slab as a whole, I would actually suggest using the ADAPT Builder software instead. ADAPT PT has been around for a really long time and is still used all over the world for the design of post-tensioning and also reinforced concrete. This is a great way to start designing these kinds of sections if you don't have any experience in PT. And this is actually how a lot of engineers get their foot in the door when it comes to this kind of design. Um, notice that on the opening screen, I have the ability to design in PT or mild reinforced concrete. I'll go ahead and stick to the PT option for this example. This is the opening screen, um, and you can see here that I can select new project, and the software is going to give me two screens. In this top view, we're going to have the structure, and as I input information for the geometry and loading, that information is going to show up here. And in this bottom view, I will have um, all the inputs that the software is going to require to produce results. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, once I was in here the last time, I think I, I pretty much changed, uh, I, I stayed in uh, American units. So at any time, um, you can actually convert your units in the project. So you can see that my current unit is American, but I also have the option of uh, using SI units or MKS. When I enable SI, I'm going to have the ability to use uh, codes outside of the US. We have um, the Australian code implemented. We also have Canadian, Hong Kong, etc. I'm going to go ahead and stick to the American units for today's example. So I'll hit cancel and go back here into my project. The software is going to require some basic information. I can include a general title here and a specific title, and you can call this whatever you want. This is information that'll show up in the reporting section later. And you'll notice that I have three options for different sections that I can work with in the program. I can work uh, in a two-way slab, I can work in a one-way slab, or I can do a beam example. As I toggle between these options, you can see that the information that the program requires is actually changing. So for this example, we're actually going to select the beam option. And um, I am going to have the software consider the effective flange width. Um, and it, later, it'll ask me what kind of criteria I want to use for that. I'll go ahead and select next. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you had selected SI units, all of these other codes would be highlighted and you would be able to select between those. For today's example, I'll just go ahead and select ACI 318, the 2014 release. I want to mention that um, the 2019 will, the 2019 version will be implemented in the 2020 release of ADAPT PT. Uh, that should be available in the next couple of months. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, while today I'm not going to go through each one of these inputs, we do have a couple of things that you can access in order to um, understand what each one of these inputs uh, is going to require. One of those options is here under the help menu. We have a documentation um, section where that will populate a PDF for uh, a PDF start, a getting started guide that will go through each one of these inputs. And then we also have an ADAPT uh, support YouTube channel where you can view examples of one-way slabs, two-way slabs, and beams, and those go into a lot more detail as to what the uh, software is requiring. For today's example, um, under the execution mode, I want to go ahead and, and make sure that I'm in the interactive mode. This is going to allow me to change the force of my PT in the recycler window um, at the end, and it's also going to allow me to change um, the tendon drape. So for everything else, I'll just go ahead and keep these inputs. Um, this screen here is where I'm going to first start to uh, construct my model. Um, notice that I will uh, add a number of spans here in the beginning. Let's say that for today's example, we're going to use six spans. The software limits you to 20 spans, and you can actually add cantilevers on either end of your model. For today's example, I'll just go ahead and select six spans, and I'm going to be using a T-section here. Um, I want to highlight this line here, which is our typical line. Any changes that I make at this, uh, at this level it, are going to update the entire model at once. So say that for today's example, we're going to have a span of 30 feet, and maybe my beam width is going to be 22 inches, the height of my beam is going to be 24 inches, the tributary width associated with this beam is maybe maybe an interior span or something like that. It's going to be 2.5. 
240 inches, and the height of my slab is 8 inches. Notice that all of these inputs are in inches except the span, which is in feet. Um, you will also notice that as I inputted this information into the software, I started seeing some action up here in my structure view. I can zoom extends here and the software has already started to produce my model for me. The other thing I want to mention in the screen is that this RH value is the reference point um, that we will use for our tenants. Typically, that's from the bottom of the concrete, so I'm going to go ahead and update that for the whole height. Oh, I'm, I'm doing span one, but actually I want to go ahead and update the entire um, span there, so the entire section. Um, so all of my references are going to be then from the bottom of the concrete. Oh, let's see. It says warning. Imp what did I do here? Oh, B value. Here we go. So here I did not have, I did not hit enter. Oh, B value. Oh, <laughs> okay. Here we go. I don't think I was hitting enter. There we go. Okay, let's see. Yep. All right, in this next section, I'm going to define my effective width for that beam. Uh, one option is to use the ACI code. Another one is to use my own values or to use Euro code. For today, I'm just going to stick to ACI. In this next screen, I'll identify my supports. I can establish that the model is going to have columns below or you know, both ab above and below or no columns at all. For today, we'll just go ahead and select the lower column. I'll have to input here a height um, associated with those columns and I can specify either rectangular columns or let's say circular columns instead. Um, the last thing I want to mention on the screen is this percent here. Um, I can change the stiffness of the column in that section. This next screen will just walk me through the kind of boundary conditions that I can use for those columns. I can either say that these are going to be fixed or pinned or roller. Um, for today, let's go ahead and update these all to pinned. Um, this next screen is all about loading. Um, a couple of shortcuts here. If I wanted to load the entire model at once, I can start typing all. And let's say I can either identify superimposed dead loads or live loads. For this, let's go ahead and do a dead load of maybe 20 PSF. Oh, I don't think my number lock is on. Here we go. All right. Um, I do want to mention that we have the ability to add all kinds of loads here, uniform, partially uniform, concentrated, etc. A shortcut here is to use the second letter of um, the diagrams up here to, to do a shortcut for that kind of load. So for example, if I just selected M, it would populate for that. If I selected P or if I selected um, U for uniform. So for today, I'll go ahead and add that 20 PSF. What am I hitting? I think, I think I'm using, here we go, okay. And here's the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and do a superimposed live load of 50 PSI. Um, the other option I wanna mention is that the program will automatically compute self-weight. Um, so if you disable that, the soft, you'll have to input that yourself. So I'll go ahead and click Next, and when I come back, the software will have populated all of those loadings, uh, all of those loads for each one of the spans that I've stipulated previously, since I used the All feature. This next screen is just going to walk me through the concrete strength, and I can input a different strength for my slabs and beams and for my uh, columns. I'll go ahead and leave those. This next screen is all about bar sizing. So I can stipulate and say I have a preferred bar size for top and bottom. You know, maybe I want to use number six at the top and number seven at the bottom, for example. And I can also specify shear reinforcement for beams and my two way slabs. The system, pardon me, the software does give you the option of designing with bonded tendons or unbonded. Typically in the US, we use half inch diameter unbonded tendons. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those there. The base reinforcement can be an option you use when you know that you want to include a certain number of bars or maybe a mesh in your slab. You can also use this option if you have an existing slab condition that you want to evaluate and you know the reinforcement there. If you select no, the software is actually going to compute the required reinforcement for your section. So I'll go ahead and select that. 
Since we're working in a beam, uh, with a beam section today, I will uh, keep my initial stress at three here, um, my factor at three. The sustained uh, stress is gonna be at seven and a half, and I can go as far as 12 here for the, for the total stress. So I'll go ahead and update that. The compression stresses are derived exactly from the code, so I'm just gonna leave those there. As this is a beam section, I can say that my minimum P over A is maybe 150 PSI, and we can go as far as 400. And for the percent of dead load to balance, uh, maybe we can change this to 50 and um, update this to 100. We do have a technical note that we can send to you if you're interested in learning what the requirements are for PT slab systems, especially if you're new to designing PT, that might be a good reference for you to figure out what these numbers need to be in different scenarios. Um, the software does give you the option of computing, uh, of using the force um, in the tendons, which would be equal in at the whole length of the tendon, or it would compute what the changes are throughout that tendon. And when you select this other option, you can compute the friction losses or the long-term losses. We'll just go ahead and do force selection for today. In this screen, you're able to determine the kind of profile that you're gonna be using in your tendons. So you have a couple of options here. And just for today's example, we're gonna keep the reverse parabolic shape, which is usually pretty, pretty common. This next screen is all about cover. So you can specify different cover criteria for your tendons and then for your reinforcement. This screen is the first of two that are going to give you some some control over the kind of bars that the program is generating for you for the reinforcement. So here you would specify some minimum bar extensions. And on this screen, you have a lot more flexibility to define your curtailment. And that's actually based on a couple of options that you can select down here. This is the last screen of our input. And in this screen, the software is just asking you uh, to input some strength load combinations and some service load combinations. We'll go ahead and keep the defaults here. and say yes. So the next thing I just want to do is quickly save my model. I have trouble sometimes finding my model, so I'm going to save it on my desktop. So while that's running, that's just essentially producing that, that file that I can access later. And the next thing I'm going to want to do is execute my analysis. I'm going to be going into this um, recycler window up here, this execute. And what the software is doing is taking all of the input that I provided, geometry, loading, um, stress uh, criteria, et cetera, and it's going to determine an optimal PT layout for me. So at a glance, I can see that the uh, software is checking the PT force and the criteria based, uh, it'll check it versus the criteria that I've inputted. It'll check dead load balancing and stresses. So when the program says, okay, based off of that criteria, the design that we've selected meets it, it'll flag it as okay. And anytime that it doesn't, it'll there'll be an NG here uh, and it'll also color it like maroon or something. Um, here, I can actually update the force of my tendon. So maybe you don't want to put 341.1 on your plan. Maybe you want to update that to 250 or 350, pardon me. So I'll go ahead and update that. And we don't like to use fractions of inches on our plan. So maybe I'm going to update the drape here to just 18. Notice that as soon as I made some changes in the screen, the, the software is actually flagging me to go ahead and hit the recycler window again. So it's saying, hey, you have new input, let me work this out for you. Um, aside from this screen, you can also see that we have additional tabs over here. You can actually check your initial condition stresses here or the required force based off of what the software is computing. So once you finalize your PT design here, you can go ahead and, and hit exit. You've got a stellar beam design, and now you just want to show the world how awesome you are at PT. So once we exit this window, we're gonna get we're gonna get the option to um, you can view graphs and you can actually generate a report. One of the tools that's most commonly used is this builder sum tool, which is gonna give you a brief um, summary of everything that you've inputted into the software and some results. So you'll see the spans and the, the beam section here. You're going to see your top bar and your tendon profile. You're going to see your bottom reinforcement and your shear. And then right here on the second page, you'll see your deflections. So this is actually one of the um, printouts that engineers use a lot when they submit their calculations.
So I'll go, to go ahead and close that. And the last thing I want to mention is that we do have the ability to generate a report. Um, this gives you the ultimate flexibility in what you want to include in that report. So you can include a cover. Maybe you have some information here. You want to include the project design parameters um, and maybe a legend. And so um, at this point, you just select uh, create new report. I'm going to save this as report for my beam. And the software is going to populate that information in a Word document that you can then use for your submittals or maybe to share some of this information with other engineers in your office. This concludes my very quick and simple overview of the Adapt PT software. Be sure to let us know if you have any questions or if you want to receive the technical note I mentioned earlier. You can email us at adaptsales at Thank you for your time.